Hi folks, I'm coming to you today from McCall, a bustling hub of year-round recreation in the beautiful west central mountains of Idaho. In the normal year, tens of thousands of tourists descend upon our town for holidays, events like the annual winter carnival, and all kinds of outdoor recreation. We have three ski resorts, hundreds of miles of maintained biking, hiking, and snowmobile trails, golf, whitewater boating, motor boating, and almost any other outdoor activity you can think of. To give you a sense of the annual tourist influx in McCall, there are nearly 10,000 homes in the McCall impact area and less than 3,000 full-time residents. In McCall, tourism is our economy. One of the main economic drivers in McCall is Payette Lake. In nearly 5,000 acres, the lake offers a host of summer and winter activities, and it's the source of the town's drinking water. Motorized boating, the predominant activity on Payette Lake, is regulated by general state laws and codes. But these laws only require a 100-foot no-wake zone on Idaho waterways, not very far out. So, in 2008, to protect shoreline development and other users of the lake, the Valley County Commission passed an ordinance mandating a 300-foot no-wake zone on the lake. In 2018, however, upon renewal of the ordinance, it was discovered it contained improper wording, was legally unenforceable, and would need to be rewritten. At this moment, numerous local conservation groups, individuals, and businesses sprung into action, requesting that the no-wake zone be extended to 500 or even 1,000 feet. This was in response not just to the increase in use on the lake in recent years, but the growing popularity of surf boats, boats designed to create a wake so large you can surf them without a tow rope. As expected, boat owners, some local businesses, and boating industry representatives were outraged. They argued that surf boat owners were being singled out and that surf boats were no more impactful than any other motorized boats. With little relevant data on the subject, negotiations quickly reached an impasse where they stand to this day. So, to help clarify the situation, I decided to answer one especially burning question. Is a 300-foot no-wake zone sufficient to protect environmental resources in Payette Lake? The threats posed by motorized boating have been well established over the years. A partial list includes pollutant discharge, noise pollution, visitor conflict, shoreline erosion, and lake bed sediment disturbance. The last, lake bed sediment disturbance, is especially important because it can lead to resuspension of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus in the water column. Once in the water column, these nutrients can foster cyanobacteria blooms. Cyanobacteria or blue-green algae, is highly toxic to humans and animals, typically leads to recreational use closures on waterways, and can lead to contamination of domestic water supplies. In McCall, any of these would cause severe disruption to our community and economy. Furthermore, studies performed in the late 1990s showed elevated levels of nutrients in some areas of lake bed sediments, exacerbating the need for this threat to be studied and mitigated in Payette Lake. While my research is ongoing, I have already made substantial headway on analyzing the threats posed by motorized boats on Payette Lake, and wake surf boats in particular. To date, I have begun modeling wind regimes on the lake, analyzed lake bed sediments and substrates around the lake, modeled slipstream impacts from wake surf boats, and determined areas of lake bed vulnerability. Modeling slipstream impacts was especially useful, as it indicated how deep in the water column the effects of a boat propeller would be felt, and thus, one measure to determine an appropriate distance from shore for a no-wake zone. To make the models, I personally collected trim, speed, and RPM data aboard a 2019 MB Sports F-22 Tomcat surf boat, and I crowdsourced data from popular boating forums. The latter proved to be especially useful, as some users had compiled extremely complex data sets regarding the performance of their boats. With the data, I created slipstream velocity profiles for three boats, a 2019 Malibu LSV-22, a 2016 Malibu LSV-22, and a 2019 Axis T-23, all operating at three different trim angles. In these pictures, you can see just how large of a wake these boats can create. Displayed here are the slipstream velocity profiles for one of the boats, the 2016 Malibu LSV-22. As can be seen, slipstream velocities of up to one quarter meter per second were predicted at depths up to 13 meters. 
Models for the other boats predicted slipstream velocities of up to one quarter meter per second at depths between 10 and 12 meters. This velocity, one quarter meter per second, is important because it is sufficient to initiate motion of clay, silt, and the smallest of sand particles, all of which are typical substrates in Payette Lake. To correlate the slipstream profiles to the 300-foot no-wake zone, I analyzed bathymetric data for five miles of lakeshore around the southwest basin of the lake. I divide the area into 20 one-quarter mile transects, and at each transect I estimated the maximum and minimum distance from shore for the 6 and 10 meter contour depths. I found that portions of the lake are shallower than 10 meters at the 300-foot no-wake zone boundary in 13 out of 20 transects. In 10 out of 20 transects, the lake is shallower than 6 meters at the 300-foot no-wake zone boundary. As shown by my research, a 300-foot no-wake zone is not sufficient to protect lake bed sediments from disturbance in the southwest basin of Payette Lake. Lake bed sediments in other areas with low bathymetric gradients, such as Pilgrim's Cove, Paradise Point, and North Beach, are also likely vulnerable to disturbance from motorized watercraft. While extending the no-wake zone will decrease the usable area of the lake, a focus point of motorized boat users, the amount is small. In the southwest basin of the lake, with a 300-foot no-wake zone, 13% of the lake is off-limits to motorized boats creating a wake. This is represented by the red line on the map. With the no-wake zone extended to 500 feet, represented by the yellow line, the usable area of the lake would only decrease by 7%, or less than 200 acres. In addition to protecting environmental resources, this expansion of the no-wake zone could also mitigate user conflict, as it would provide a larger corridor for other water sports such as paddleboarding and kayaking. My research informs one aspect of the threats posed by motorized boats, the potential for the slipstream to disturb lake bed sediments. In the summer of 2020, I will continue my research by examining surface waves produced by wake surf boats. This will be coupled with wind data which I have already started collecting, to further help determine a suitable distance from shore for motorized boat operations. I will also incorporate research on shoreline erosion on Paya Lake, performed in the summer of 2019 by a local graduate student. With my research complete, in the fall of 2020, I will issue my final recommendation to the Valley County Commission in the City of McCall for an effective and appropriate no-wake zone on Paya Lake. As previously stated, my research informs one aspect of the threats posed by motorized boats. To further elucidate the effects of motorized boating on Payette Lake, other pertinent data needs include updated information on nutrient concentrations in lake bed sediments, high-resolution recreational boating studies, carrying capacity studies, information concerning the economic effects of shoreline erosion and shoreline infrastructure damage, and strategies to reduce the risk of invasive species dispersal. As resource utilization changes over time, management schemes must also adapt. This approach to analyzing the effects of motorized boat use was designed to bring an objective look at recreation management on Payette Lake and to inform decision makers with the most relevant and up-to-date data. With further research, I hope to find a working solution for all of the users of the lake, all the while protecting the natural capital the lake provides for our community. Finally, I would like to thank my community sponsor, the Big Payette Lake Water Quality Council, for supporting my research, the Faraday family and the Haley Fund for their financial support, the staff at Western Colorado, my co-presenters Brady and Taylor, my parents and my partner Yvonne, and last but not least, Dr. John and my advisor Sally Thode for welcoming me with open arms into the Master Environmental Management Program at Western Colorado. Thank you for all your support.